the Kristen Smart case and the top 10 things that everybody needs to know. Number 10. Kristen was last seen May 25, 1996 in the company of Paul Flores at the intersection of Grand and Perimeter on the Cal Poly campus at roughly 2 o'clock in the morning. Cadaver dogs, four of them, sniffed every dorm on campus, and all four of the dogs independently alerted to Paul Flores' dorm room. Number eight, concrete was poured in the Flores' backyard the very same weekend Kristen vanished. My source for this is the FBI agent. The address is 529 East Branch Street in the village of Arroyo Grande, the home that Susan Flores currently lives in with her boyfriend, Mike McConville. Number seven, FBI agent Jack Schaefer wrote a search warrant requesting that back in the year 2000, the backyard be searched and dug up. San Luis Obispo Sheriff's Department voted not to dig up the backyard, thus angering the FBI agent who called this a missed opportunity. Number six, world-renowned cadaver dog Buster alerted to the Flores' property for human decomposition the same exact dog found 35 U.S. Marines buried in the Pacific Island of Tarawa for World War II. These soldiers were buried more than 70 years ago. You can YouTube Buster the Cadaver Dog and see the video for yourself. We're talking about the very same dog. Number five, the FBI told the Smarts family that they already had enough evidence to arrest Paul. They shared this with the Smarts over 15 years ago. We need for the district attorney to step up. Number four, Cal Poly has turned a very cold shoulder towards the smarts. They once offered to erect a memorial park bench on campus, but only if the smarts would sign a legal document releasing Cal Poly of any liability for what happened to Kristen. Cal Poly refused to allow Kristen's father the use of one of their dorm rooms one weekend while Stan was in town looking for his daughter. That weekend, an event was going on in San Luis, and all hotel rooms were booked. It was between semesters, so the dorms were empty. Cal Poly told Stan no. Number three, a turquoise earring was found in the driveway of the Flores' home and turned over to the Sheriff's Department. Somehow, that earring was lost, and the Sheriff's Department tried to conceal this fact to the smarts. It was only after a deposition when the smarts learned of the existence of this earring that they demanded to see it. Each time they asked, the sheriff came up with an excuse for why it couldn't happen right now. It was only after the smarts demanded to see the earring once and for all that the sheriff's department came clean and admit that they lost the earring. Number two. In 2003, I was approached by a co-worker of Ruben who saw me at the San Luis Obispo Thursday night farmer's market. Number two. In 2003, I was approached by a co-worker of Ruben Flores, Paul's father, who saw me at the San Luis Obispo Thursday evening farmer's market. This co-worker was visibly angry, and he told me that Ruben came up to him at work in the warehouse one morning and began talking to him about Kristen. He told this man that Kristen was a bitch and that she deserved to die. And finally, and most significantly, number one, plea bargain offer. The legal counsel for the Flores family made the following offer. Drop the charges against our client down to a misdemeanor and we will lead you to Kristen's body. The state came back and said, will you just lead us to her body or will you tell us what happened? Paul's lawyer, you can still touch her body, but first you have to drop the charges. This offer happened twice. On both times, Smartship will take that deal. Both times, legal counsel for the Flores failed to respond. 